In the heart of nature, we find our true strength, a connection to our roots, to the land, to each other. Introducing Rootwork Deodorant, infused with the potent power of High John the Conqueror Root. Embrace the natural strength and resilience passed down through generations. Feel the purity of natural ingredients, harmonizing with your body and spirit. Rootwork Deodorant, bringing you in tune with nature and with yourself. Rootwork Deodorant, connect, empower, thrive. Available now at rootworkstyle.com. From New York Times best-selling author Tariq Nasheed comes foundational Black American race baiter, the groundbreaking book shaking up the conversation on race in America. As one of the most influential voices for Black Americans today, Nasheed exposes the tactics used to manipulate, subjugate, and control Black communities. In this powerful read, Tariq Nasheed equips you with the knowledge to resist injustice and reclaim your narrative. Don't miss out on the book that's redefining the game. Foundational Black American Race Baiter, available now at officialfba.com. Get your copy today. We don't know the beginnings of rap, because as long as our music has been recording, people have been rapping. The disco DJs separated themselves from us. We were the next generation coming up with this thing, and they were like, what's this little hippity hop thing? The first time I heard somebody spit a 16 over a break beat was probably Melly Mel. The Melly Mel sound that you hear today, I got that sound from Hollywood. I was doing the same form of entertainment long before it had a name. A lot of the gangs were fading out by the time hip hop came in. A lot of those gangs turned into crude. As far as influencing hip hop, I saw no Puerto Rican or Jamaican influences whatsoever. I started breakdancing in 70. When rap and hip hop was all black, it was negative. Now that it became a big phenomenon and corporately acceptable, now there's this need to take foundation of black Americans out of the creation of it and give it away to other people. And it's important for us to set the record straight. Discover the heart of our history at the Hidden History Museum in Los Angeles. Now open with new weekend hours, Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Located at 2131 West Jefferson Boulevard in Los Angeles, our museum showcases the brilliance and ingenuity of foundational Black American culture, along with the richness of global Black culture. Come in, explore our displays, and shop for books, films, and other unique items that celebrate our legacy. Also, be sure to look out for our popular special events. For more information, visit HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Hi, I'm Mateo. Do you want to learn about Hidden Heroes? Hidden Heroes from A to Z is a cool book that tells the stories of amazing black heroes you might not know about. You'll meet inventors, you'll meet explorers, and leaders who change the world. It's fun, inspiring, and you can learn so much. Get your copy now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Let's discover our hidden heroes together. You're a mulatto, you're an octoroon. So when we say we're going to designate our own distinction as foundational black Americans, we are on the road to cultural cohesion. You cannot have any type of political cohesion or economic cohesion until you get the culture together. And that's why it's important to get our history together. As you guys know, they are trying to erase history and revise history. 
Now this happens on the right and the left of the political spectrum. As we know, Donald Trump is talking about having the 1776 project where he's about to revamp white history and they already have the 1619 project and that's not totally accurate either. That's from the Democrats. As Foundation of Black Americans, we need to understand that our modern history, it actually started in 1526. If you look at some of the banners and some of the documents showing the Foundation of Black American flag, we have the year 1526. Now why is that significant? That's the year that black people were brought over by the Spanish. The minute black people hit the shores of South Carolina, because that's where they landed, black people immediately rose up against the Spanish and ran them out of the North American landscape. So our history begins at fighting these white supremacists. That's why they don't like to go that far back. So we were the first foreign colony that was permanently established. Also, the black people mixed in with the other black aboriginal people who were already here. This is another part of our history that we have to understand. When they start talking about Native American, we get the idea of these kind of Asian, Mongolian looking people as Native Americans. We have to understand, many of the Aboriginal people here look like folks in this room. There is a reason why, when the Spanish came, they started to see the people who look like us and started to immediately name them Negro and Indian. Indian means dark skin. They look like the people over in India. So we have to understand those distinctions. And when did this history get erased and why did it get erased? I want y'all to remember this name here. There's a name that y'all need to remember. It's called William Plecker. There's a man named William Plecker who contributed to the erasure of our Aboriginal history. William Plecker was the son of a Confederate in the 1920s and 30s or in Virginia. He became the head of the Vital Statistics Office. He was also a white supremacist who was a part of the eugenics program, and he was a part of the Anglo-Saxon club where they wanted to whiten everybody up. He was the one who really implemented the one drop rule. People think the one drop rule is to stop black people or white people from claiming white because they got blackness in them. The one drop rule was to stop black people from claiming the Native American status. Plecker erased a lot of people's vital records. He looked at people's census records, church records, and he made sure anybody who looked black or anybody who had any type of black ancestry mixed in with Native American, they destroyed all of those records. They did that in Virginia. They did that in New Orleans with another white woman named Naomi Drake. So y'all remember those names. Let's fast forward to the 1960s. When they had the case Loving versus the state of Virginia, and y'all remember they did a movie about that recently, where it was a black woman married to a white man, they were fighting to get the marriage legalized. What was the state of Virginia? The state of Virginia was the law that Plecker put together decades before, forbidding interracial marriages, and also Mildred Loving, the woman involved in the case, she was actually really Native American, but they reclassified her as black. See, this is what we have to understand that part of history and understand why they try to erase our history because this is our culture, this is our land. And Foundation of Black Americans, we fought for everybody and we put everybody in the forefront and we prioritize everybody, but we forget to prioritize ourselves. And we do, do that to our detriment sometimes. brothers and sisters who come from African and Caribbean backgrounds. Where are our brothers and sisters? Give them a round of applause because we still with you. We're still here. Let's be very clear. We're still with you. My assistant Ola. Have y'all seen Ola running around here? He's Nigerian. That's my right hand man. He's running. He's the one. He got the little Venus and Serena braids. He's running around here. 
see, there he is. That's, he took the beads out. The beads was making too much noise. But we rock with our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. See, what happened in the 1960s and what we did, we started to fight for immigration for our black brothers and sisters in the diaspora because we wanted reinforcement to help us fight white supremacy. Before 1965, the brothers and sisters who came from the diaspora, they were actually reinforcement. They were riders. We got brothers like Schomburg from Puerto Rico. He was a rider. Marcus Garvey, J.A. Rogers, Dr. Ben, Stokely Carmichael. We had some riders. White society had a problem with that. They had to get in front of that because they said, wait, we can't keep letting these other revolutionary-minded black people over here with our North American Negroes. That's going to be a problem. So what the white supremacists would do after 1965, going into the 70s, they would go to these countries and they would start screaming people. So they got, a, they got the coon train going on over there. They started screaming the coons and they started letting over the Candace Owens types over here to undermine us and they told them that they were the model minorities. So you have a lot of groups, not just from Africa and the Caribbean, but you got a lot of these groups from South American countries, from Asian countries, who come over here and try to run the model minority game on us. And they see how hard we fight and they look at us and say, well, we came over from Thailand with no money and look how much better we're doing than you foundational black Americans. So I got a couple of questions for that. How come your home country in China or Thailand or Asia is raggedy? Why did you leave if you got it so popular? And the thing is with foundational black Americans, we're the only group that's constantly fighting white supremacy. The Asians and all of these other groups, Hispanic, nobody could have been over here without us fighting for them. You don't make people put respect on our name as foundational black Americans. None of these other groups have been sabotaged like us. Our businesses are sabotaged. You don't have them bombing Asian businesses or Hispanic businesses over here. They would bomb Tulsa. They would destroy Wilmington, Rosewood. All these black areas, they would run freeways over our prosperous neighborhoods. So they've deliberately sabotaged us over and over again and we had to constantly rebuild. No other group had a COINTELPRO program where the government is targeting your progress. Don't ever let nobody try to disrespect us talking about how well they're doing because the minute they get tapped or slapped around, they're out. We have to rebuild over and over and over again without any help. And also, when it comes to us getting our tangibles, they tell us, well, we're gonna throw something in the air for everybody, and it's gonna trickle down to you black people because you've been disproportionately affected. See, we gotta watch these real janky terms they throw out. See, we gotta suffer through all the degradation the Jim Crow, the slavery, and then when it comes time to tangibles, they prioritize Eskimos and hermaphrodites over us. So we're not going to go for that. We're not going for the trickle down. We're not going for the disproportionate game. Because we were not disproportionately put in slavery. We were not indirectly enslaved. They directly enslaved us. We were not indirectly Jim Crow. They directly Jim crow us. We were not indirectly mass incarcerated, they directly mass incarcerated us. We are not being indirectly gentrified, they are directly gentrifying us. So when it comes to our tangibles, they're going to directly give those tangibles to foundational black Americans. Now, y'all ready to get started with the foundational black Americans, you know, guys? Are y'all 